Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks. Uh, welcome to day 10 of 100 Days of Making Comics, the program where I set aside at least 30 minutes a day to work on my own personal comic book projects. I've been working on issue 3 of Young and the Dead, my kids vs. zombie stories, Goonies meets Night of Living Dead. You've heard the pitch before. If you hadn't, well, now you know. So today, well actually let me go back to yesterday, I, I was kind of all over the place yesterday, I had a lot going on in my mind, so <laughs> the episode didn't quite come out as well as I wanted to, um, but that's alright, you know, that's, this is what we're doing here, it was 100 days, we're taking one day at a time and uh, gradually trying to improve and, and, and all of that stuff. So uh, today what I thought I'd do is go back and kind of redo some of what I was talking about yesterday. I talked a little bit about my scripting process, but I wanted to take it a little further and give you guys just a crash course of how I create uh, a comic book from beginning to end. And like I said, this is a crash course, so this is going to be fairly quick. I'm not going to go into detail, but just show you my process. And this process is what I did for issue one and two of Young and the Dead. Issue three, I'm trying out some different things to try to speed things up or uh, work more efficiently. Um, but since I don't really know exactly what I'm doing, uh, I don't have a I don't have a set game plan. I can't really take you through, and because I haven't done it yet, I can't take you through how I'm doing issue three. So I'm just going to show you how I've done things before in the past. Uh, a lot of this stuff is is very close to what I assume many people do so this might be old hat to any of you guys that are that know a little bit about how comics are created but you know maybe there's maybe I do something a little differently I don't know or maybe you know maybe this will be of interest to you so first off of course I start with and I've talked about this before but we're gonna start from from the beginning and go go till the end of the product. So I just have notebooks, sketchbooks, things like that. I jot down all my notes, what, what I think the story is gonna be about, character uh, designs, character descriptions, uh, descriptions on some of the places, the locations in the book, story ideas, plot devices, all that kind of stuff I usually do by hand. Um, sometimes I'll do it on my phone, uh, just depending on where I am, but uh, a lot of times I, th I think some of the creativity, there's a little more creativity with the, you know, using using actually pen on paper as, a port as opposed to just typing things out. So, start with just my general ideas, uh, get all that down. Once I have that down, then I go to, and I showed this before, but I go to Evernote. And before yesterday, I noticed I was pointing things out, and you can't see because then the camera focuses on my finger and not the screen. So anyway, but so I I, uh, I will type every you know type my script out. Sorry about that. I'm trying to okay, uh, type the script out, get all the dialogue writ written in there, and. Like I said before, I usually come back to it and I'm tweaking it along the way. Um, but the scripting is the second second part of uh, of my process after the general gathering of ideas and, and note taking and all that. And so from there, I work on my thumbnails. So I'm going to go over to my other. I kind of my studio's kind of separated into different things. I've got a little loft area here where I do most of my computer stuff, and then my art desk is in my other. Um, studio slash spare bedroom. So we're gonna go over there to my art desk. Let's see. All right. So this is the art desk right here. Um, also, it doubles as a light table. I'll turn this on. I don't know if you can see the difference. It's on, off. Oh, you can't even really see. It takes a little while for it to warm up. Anyway, there you go. I can't even see. I mean, anyway, I tr trust me, it does. It, it is illuminated from below, and I can do cool sketching and stuff. Let me just set this. <laughs> this one's a little more gorilla style. All right. Okay. <laughs> so at the art desk, the next step I do is my thumbnails, which I'll just break break pages up. And let's see, I've got like nine nine uh, pages on a page here, and I usually make sure. 
so this this particular one, these are this is a big action sequence, and I my, and they're kind of double page spread, kind of they're they're not full double page spread, but they're sing you know they're paneled across both. You can't even see that. I'm sorry. I'm not even going to bother showing you that. In this case, I think it's better to to tell than show. But uh, yeah, just real rough. I plot out the whole story with the thumbnails and after the thumbnails um, a lot of people they'll go to like a rough pencils uh, the way I used to do things was I would just draw basically any single panel I would draw out like on just copy paper and I would take all and when I said once I got everything I really liked I would take all those I'd scan it into the computer I would go into like Photoshop or something and then I'd lay all those out print them out and bring it to the light table, trace them on, um, so let's see, so I've got this uh, kind of 11 by 17 um, comic book pages. It's all pre-ruled. You don't really need the pre-ruled stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I have a blank page. Anyway, so, but I, I'll, I usually would just take all those drawings that I did because I wanted to, I would kind of want to make sure everything was perfect, so I took my best, my best panels, and then I put all that together, printed it out, traced it on here, and then I would ink over that. Uh, when I started Young and the Dead, it was part of a, a mini comics club, and there was sort of a time limit, so I, I said, you know, I got to start. I just got to go straight to the page off, based on my thumbnails. Look at my thumbnails and just lay out the pages the way they were and it was really intimidating because I'd never done anything like that. I'm like, well, what if I like one panel but I don't really like the other? Do I scrap the whole thing and go back? It ended up working out okay. Um, in the future, I, although I do like I do like the idea of, of doing all these panels separately and pick and choose what you like best and that's one of the benefits to working digitally because you can do that a lot more easy, a lot easier. You don't have to scan in all these different drawings, you don't have to put them all together, it's really easy just to cut and paste. So that is one of the benefits to digital um, that I may be exploring. We'll find out a little more about that as, as I progress with this project. So anyway, so I'll start off and uh, let me see here, let me pick this up and we'll go get a little closer here. So what do we have? We've got some comic book pages. Um, you know what? I think it's better to just set this down and hold them up. Sorry, this is all very, very experimental the way I'm doing this. Um, all right, okay. So anyway, so I'm gonna go back. Uh, I don't have my new comic book, Young and the Dead, the one I'm working on now. I don't really have any pencils because they were all inked, so you can't really see that. But um, my my pencils usually aren't anything really spectacular. This is uh, this is from a comic book and I'll hold it up in a minute, but this is from a comic book called Retrofits that I've also talked about. It's one that I started and never finished, so I still have some pencil pages that I haven't inked. I don't know if you can see this. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, I usually do my pencils really lightly, and then I'll build on that, so this is probably, this is probably the first stage of, a, of, of penciling. Um, and what I use to pencil, I use a, a drafting pencil. I don't know if I'd necessarily, this is what I'm comfortable with. I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend this. It, you gotta get a, have to, you have to get a special, there's a special kind of pencil sharpener and everything and it, it tends to break. Um, but for whatever, it has, it has some pluses, but it's, this is mainly designed for back when, the, before CAD, when people used to do drafting all by hand. Um, and for whatever reason, I got stuck on these and it works for me. Again, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend it. And any of these tools, again, and you've probably heard this before from other artists, or hopefully you have, but, and I get people asking me what I use, and I'm more than happy to let you guys know, but just remember that these are just tools. These aren't, um, these aren't magic wands that are gonna make your art better. Um, really, anything that'll get, get your work on the page, uh, when we get to inking anything, as far as any kind of inks, anything that'll get the black, solid black on the page, 
uh, whether you're using micron pens or brushes or, or whatever you want, um, whatever's more comfortable with, for you is is really what's best. Don't you know? You don't always have to just if you ask a professional or something what they use, just because you're using the same thing isn't gonna isn't gonna make make your work any better. Um, that all comes with practice and, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so that these that's what I use. I always use non-photo blue pencil. I start off real light. I gradually add more to it. Um, until I get what I want and it's pretty rough my, my pencils aren't really detailed I know a lot of people they'll go they'll do rough pencils they'll go back and, and tighten them up and tighten them up I usually tighten most of my stuff up during the inking stages um, that's just how I work uh, for better or for worse so so here's a here's another page from retrofits here um, this one is like halfway inked halfway penciled so you can kind of see Again, that's about as detailed as my pencils were before I started on the ink. Uh, so, anyway, um, another way that I, I was working, um, usually I'll save the lettering till, till last. Uh, with retrofits, I did something a little different because I was working with some, I wanted to do some really interesting graphic design for the book because it does take place, uh, a lot of it takes place in the 70s or has a 70s theme. I wanted these really funky 70s style panel borders. So if you can see this, um, see how these panel borders are. Um, you can see, a, let me throw another page here. You can kind of see how these kind of interconnect. They're all kind of like rounded and kind of, you can see, kind of see back in here. Real funky looking. So, so for these, what I did was I penciled the pages and again, this this is this is probably more steps than we need to do. A pencil the pages, scan them, scan the pencils in, and I've got a I've got kind of a, a large size scanner printer. So I scan, and that's something that you know, if you are doing traditional comic book uh, work and not working digital, that's something nice to have. Um, but anyway, so because of all these angles, it would just be a pain in the ass to do all this stuff with. Um, with uh, you know little templates and rulers and things and micron pens so I did all that I did all this in Illustrator printed those out onto this board because it my printer can also print on, on uh, some uh, you know comic book you know like a Bristol um, and then I would ink over that so all my lines and some of the type not all the dialogue balloons but some stuff like this uh, this title scene here is uh, that was all done in Illustrator. Um, so anyway, so that's another way that I've done it. With, uh, with Young and the Dead, uh, I just do all my lettering uh, in the computer. So, so once I have uh, my pencils, let's see, then I go to ink. This is a page from Young and the Dead, number one. Um, and I think these panel borders I did just draw by hand. Um, these are, Young and the Dead is a lot simpler than the Retrofits panel borders, real more straightforward. Um, so I will ink all those like right on the page. And what I used for issue number one, and this is a question that came up on one of my previous videos that somebody wanted to know what I, uh, what I used to ink with. Um, I use a lot, as you can see, I use a lot of uh, Higgins Black Magic. It's pretty good. The reason why I use this is because it's readily available. You can usually find this even at like a Michaels or, or something like that. Um, Walmart might even have it for all I know. Um, but if I can find it, if I happen to be where there's an art store, if I have the forethought to order online, I use this FW ink. And what's really cool about this is really solid, really nice, and it's acrylic based. So. It, this stuff really works really nicely. So I should probably provide uh, links to some of this stuff so you can find it online. Um, you got your Pro White for correcting your mistakes. Sometimes I don't, this, this is opaque because this stuff is supposed to be, it doesn't always have good coverage. So a lot of times I'll just wait till I get, take everything back on the computer and I will fix some of the, those mistakes on the computer. Um, in the past I've used, uh, Windsor Newton Series 7 brushes, they're kind of pricey, they can be like around $80 maybe. I got, I think I got mine in sale for half price with some kind of sale, 
still pricey. Um, but they're really nice brushes. But to speed things up on the last issue, let me see if I can find it. Oh, I got one of these things. Um, it does. It's not quite as accurate or quite as nice as the um, the Series Seven Windsor Newtons, but it's a Pentel Pocket brush pen, and it, you don't. It's got a little cartridge in here. You don't have to keep dipping the pen, so it saved me some time. And as long as you're, you know, you can do real rough stuff with it. This is great for conventions because it's portable if you're doing sketches or whatever or on the go. Um, but a second issue, I need this whole thing with this. Um, if you look really close, it's it's not quite as precise on the pages as the first issue, but um, but it did help me get things done faster. And and it's you really have to look close to notice the difference. Um, so that is inking. Uh, then after inking, I'll bring you back towards the other uh, section of my studio here. Let's see, let's see. Let me turn my computer back on. I don't know if I can set this thing up here. Hold on. You probably can't see that or see this here. I'll just. Um, I scan everything on. So, this is my printer. Uh, you know, scans large size. I scan that stuff in. All the pencil pages, I might mess around a little bit in Photoshop, but then I will do my tones. Uh, this is a black and white book, so there's not there's not like a lot of color, um, but I'll just do my gray tones and all my shadows in there. This is in Photoshop. Um, I hear Manga Studio is uh, got a lot of cool features in the new version, which I hope to get maybe color in that. Uh, this is now I'm in photo or I'm actually, actually now I am in a, Adobe Illustrator and this is where I do my lettering. You can see, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> so I do all my lettering and my balloons. I do them on separate letters or separate layers. I'll do the balloons on one layer here. You can see that in green, hopefully. And then in red here, those are the letters. Do all that stuff. Uh, oh yeah, and first, the way, I, I'll always format my pages before I do the lettering. So here you can see, this is page one, and this is like, I don't know what the actual page is, but this is one of the last pages, because when you fold them, um, that's, uh, that's how they're all put together. And then, depending on, depending on what kind of comic book I'm working on, I will either print out pages, I'll print out these, if I'm doing a mini comic, I'll print out these mini comic pages just from my own personal computer. It gets kind of expensive because if anyone owns a printer, you know that they, they get you on the ink. They'll give you the printer for practically free, but the ink, it's kind of pricey and it runs out and, you know, I could take, if, if I would have done this just straight black and white, I could have easily taken it and got it photo, photocopied but it doesn't work so well with the tone, so I printed it out. That's why I have to charge a little more for my mini comics. Um, these are my mini comic versions of Young and the Dead 1 and 2. You can see this one. This is the one that has a defect in it that I didn't notice until I gave it to somebody. <laughs> I had to give them a new copy, but it has a page missing in it. So watch those mistakes, people. Um, so if I'm doing a mini comic, then I have my... Uh, I'll print out all those pages. I've got my my cool long long arm stapler and my uh, cutting board here. I'll cut all those things out, assemble them, staple them together, and then I've got a mini comic. If I am doing the more standard issue like this, ah, hold on there, like this, then I will. Uh, send these out. These are just uh, print on demand. I send them out to a company called Kablam. They do a pretty good job. Um, it's I, The profit margin is not as big as if I was offsetting these um, because it, it, they're basically, I think the process they use is just they're, they're photocopying all this stuff and putting it together. Um, so in the future what I want to do is once I get all the issues finished, the whole story finished, I want to collect them in one big volume, have them offset printed, and then really try to market this. Uh, I know I talk about this stuff all the time, but in reality, I'm not really 
not really trying to market this so much. The reason why I'm doing these single issues is just to create milestones along the way so that's just not this task that is just so monumental that I, I can't, like, I've drawn, you know, if, if I set out to, to create a 200 page, you know, graphic novel or trade paperback versus 22 pages and break those up along the way, it's a little easier. And I have something I can show people along the way, but um, for now I'm really not marketing it I, I'm not spending a whole lot of time marketing it or telling a whole lot of people about it other than what you're hearing here. But once I get that final book done, then I think I'm going to really start to promote it. And, uh, you know, hopefully by then, after 100 episodes of these, maybe I'll get some more people that are actually interested in it. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so that's basically the crash course of how I create comics. Um, hopefully you learned something. Uh, if not, hopefully, hopefully you're somewhat entertained or else I don't think you'd be at this point in the video. So thanks again. Uh, again, just wanted to mention uh, the 100s, which is what anyone who's doing this 100 Days of Comics Challenge, what we're calling ourselves. Uh, there should be a Tumblr uh, coming soon. And uh, you can find out, find anyone else who's doing this challenge on that when that's up. That'll be, when it's live, it'll be the 100s, T-H-E-E, -E, two E's, number 100, and then S. And uh, I don't know if it's, see now, I shouldn't have mentioned that because I don't know if it's at Tumblr or what, I, or if it's got a URL. Um, anyway, I'll put the link in the, uh, in the description of the YouTube video. If you're watching this on Facebook or G plus or anything like that just go to the go to the YouTube channel and uh, you can see any links that uh, that pertain to what I'm talking about today um, and uh, I think that's all I'm gonna talk about today so I'll see you guys tomorrow that is all